Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, Victor here with Airy Management. I wanted to update this video because the audio was awful on the last one. I'm so sorry about that. Um, and we're actually updating our Airy Management to include ramping. Um, so let's get into it. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go from beginning to end and, and I'll try to explain some of the things along the way. Um, out of the three scenarios you're gonna be presented with in our Unit 2 exam, um, you're gonna have respiratory, cardiac, and airway. And typically, airway management is gonna be the easiest because that scenario can't change. We need your patient to be unresponsive with a pulse, but not breathing. They can't have a gag reflex because we want to see if you know how to, how to place a supraclotic device. Um, so typically, it's the easiest. In respiratory cardiac scenarios, there's a little bit more ambiguity. Um, so let's begin. Um, you're going to be dispatched to whatever location, it's arbitrary, for the patient who's unresponsive. And so when you arrive, you're gonna ensure that the scene is safe and that you have your BSI, which can include your gloves, a mask, uh, eye protection, okay? And when you approach the patient, you're gonna check responsiveness. You can start with a verbal, verbal uh, stimuli. Sir, sir, ma'am, ma'am, hey, hey, are you okay? Uh, typically that's not okay. And we would escalate to a painful stimuli, most commonly the sternal rub. Um, hey, hey, are you okay? And her proctor would respond with, uh, your patient's unresponsive, at which point you're going to escalate to checking for a pulse for no longer than 10 seconds. And uh, because this is airway management, your patient will have a pulse, so they don't need CPR. Um, next thing to do is head, tilt, chin, lift, all right? Um, and at this point, we want to visualize uh, for anything, any obstructions in the airway. Um, and this is when the proctor will tell you that you have vomit or blood or secretions uh, in the airway. And you're gonna be prompted to provide suction, all right? And so we need to see that you know how to assemble suction correctly, whether that's ensuring that the lid of the canister is on uh, completely and that you're connecting all the suction tubing appropriately, right? So there's one that goes to the vacuum port and the other end of that tube should go to our suction device. And, and this is um, a little tricky for some in the sense of we don't have an actual suction device on, in every station. And so um, this is something that you have to remember to verbalize, right? So plug this um, to the suction device, and then there's gonna be another set of tubing that is applied to your patient port. And then the other end of that tubing is going to be applied to a Yankauer, a rigid suction catheter. Um, and uh, you're gonna verbalize that you turn on the suction device, so it's making this loud humming sound, um, and you want to test it on your gloved hand. And by testing it, you're occluding the distal tip and you're occluding the hole, and some Yankovers don't have the hole, but you're gonna occlude the hole where your pointer finger or your thumb uh, is near, okay? And you're testing it on your gloved hand. And then after that, um, we want to see you open the mouth. These mannequins, all their mouths are wide open. You have to remember that most people's mouths when they're unresponsive are not wide open. So we have to perform something called the scissor technique. And on this, on this camera, it's gonna look like, like this. It's like the end of a snapping motion, right? So if you look down on your non-dominant hand, mine being the left hand, at the end of a snapping motion, my thumb is on the right of my middle finger. And my middle finger is gonna be sitting on the top teeth. My thumb is gonna be sitting on the bottom teeth. And I'm pushing. When you push, you're opening the mouth and you're gonna go in there with your thumb off the hole. And once you find the secretions or follow the gum lines, you're gonna occlude the hole and you're um, suctioning for no longer than 15 seconds. Now, realistically, it's not gonna take 50 seconds. Your proctor's gonna say your airway's clear at this point and the patient's still not breathing. So with our update, um, we are going to provide some ramping and on every table will be um, a set of padding, whether that's a blanket um, or other types of padding to lift the head. Um, and the purpose of this is we wanna create a level line, a straight line, a horizontal line um, from our ears to our suprasternal notch right here. And that's going to allow us to uh, place the supraglottic device a lot easier, and this goes for ALS as well, um, and minimizes the chances of uh, aspiration. Um, and in the ambulance, um, if you were to incline the head of the stretcher about 30 degrees, bring the patient's head so it's slightly leaning off the, the head of the stretcher, you're going to accomplish this as well. And so anytime the patient's not breathing, we need this device to help them breathe. It's called the BVM, bag valve mass device. And we remember to review that this notch right here um, is what's going to be hooked up to 
oxygen, 15 liters per minute of oxygen, and this reservoir bag will fill up. Um, however, now that we're EMTs and we're past CPR, um, anytime we're using this device, we're probably gonna have some type of airway adjunct, um, an OPA or an NPA. Um, and in this case, the OPA. So we're, the OPA is always gonna be our primary. If our patient was slipping in and out of consciousness, that's, that's for the NPA. Um, but because they're unconscious, we're gonna attempt the OPA. If they have a gag with reflex, we'll remove it. And so how we measure is from the earlobe to the side of the mouth. And if it looks like the OPA is extending beyond the lips of the mouth, it's probably too big. And so we escalate down, or de-escalate, um, size down a little bit. And if the top is just at the lips, this could be the right size. So remember, scissor technique to open the mouth, and you can insert the OPA upside down or uh, towards the cheek that's available. When I say available, I mean it's not covered by your non-dominant hand providing the CE to, or the scissor technique. And so we can go to the side and twist 90 degrees so the, the curve is sitting on the tongue. So just like this, scissor technique, and then 90 degrees. And if it's the right size and they don't have a gag reflex, it should naturally fall into place as you're rotating um, the OPA appropriately. And if they start to gag at this point, the proctor should tell you whether they gag or not. Um, then we're going to remove. And if you were to remove an OPA, you're going to follow the curve um, of the, the tongue, of the mouth, right? Try to break, uh, not break uh, any teeth. All right, so um, let me put that back in. We can start upside down and twist 180 or start from the cheek and twist 90, okay? Patient's still not breathing, right? We have an adjunct in place, but the patient's still not breathing. So let's ventilate, use a CE technique. The C is on the mask, applying pressure to the face and the E is tilting the head back. All right, and you squeeze every five to six seconds. So ventilate, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. We're looking for chest rise and fall, um, increase in pulse ox, increase in skin parameters. Um, and uh, at this point, your proctor is gonna prompt you that you start to notice gastric distension um, because when you squeeze the bag, you don't get to decide where the air goes, whether it's in the lungs or the stomach. It's gonna to go to both, all right? And over time, you're gonna see gastric distension. Um, or they might say things like, you're starting to notice resistance while squeezing the bag. So that might indicate that your airway is closing up, all right? Um, and something's getting tighter, right? So um, those are prompts to escalate to, in our case, in the BLS scope, a supraglottic device. And the current one that we're using is called uh, an eye gel. We used to use king tubes, um, but an eye gel in this case. And uh, king tubes are measured by height. Eye gels are measured by weight. We have a separate video up on the right-hand corner uh, going a little deeper into eye gels. Um, and simply put, um, you guesstimate the patient's weight, typically in pounds in the States, and you divide by two technically 2.2. So if our patient was 150 pounds, divide by two, 75 kilos, but know that kilos is 2.2, um, so a little less than 75. And so the ranges are written up at the top of the eye gels. So the size three is ranges 30 to 60 kilos, and the size four is 50 to 90 kilos. So if we said less than 75 kilos, we're gonna opt for the size four. Um, and so during this process, when we open it from its packaging and lubricate it up before uh, we're about to shove it in this guy's mouth. Um, we have to verbalize that our partner is continuing to ventilate every five to six seconds while we're checking uh, the eye gel. Okay, so it's not like no one's been breathing for this patient. All right, and so I want you to take the holster in your non dominant hand, grab the eye gel with your dominant hand, and then I want you to push forward so it unholsters it, and then you're going to flip it over, place both in your non dominant hand grab some lube, and you're going to place a dab of lube and a little dimple right here on the holster, okay? And you're just gonna lubricate the back side, not the front side, it needs to make a good seal. Uh, when you're ready, tell your partner, they can stop ventilating and you or them, uh, you or they can be removing the OPA, so we're gonna remove the OPA, all right? Provide a tongue jaw lift, so that's provided by performed by your thumb on the tongue, four fingers on the jaw, and if you do it correctly, pretend like there's a string on your left elbow um, and you're raising it up. And if you do it, the head's gonna come off the table, all right? And you're making room for this eye gel. So go ahead and do the tongue jaw lift, insert until you meet resistance, all right? When you've met resistance, we're going to attach 
this colorimetric device, all right? Um, and uh, this is a one-time use device. It starts out being blue or purple, depending on what you get. Um, and the quote unquote rule of thumb is gold is good. So when it detects, it's like litmus paper. When it detects carbon dioxide, it turns gold, right? It turns gold. Um, and uh, so go, that, go ahead and apply that onto the eye gel. Remove your mask from the BVM and then attach the BVM to your colorimetric device. And then you ventilate. Ventilate every five to six seconds, all right? Breath, two, three, four, five, breath. And now at the very end, um, you're going to verbalize the seven things that we're looking for to confirm placement. So you're looking for chest rise and fall. Your partner's gonna take their stethoscope, they're gonna apply it over the epigastric region looking for listening to any bubbling in the stomach region. So they place their stethoscope over the epigastric region and then you squeeze, you're sending air down somewhere and they're gonna confirm or deny whether they hear epigastric sounds. If they do, something's wrong. And it's hard to fuck it up on uh, the eye gel, okay? Um, so they're gonna move the lung stethoscope to the lung sounds, squeeze, squeeze. All right, so now we got epigastric sounds, lung sounds. Next thing is condensation. Remember when we were ma wearing masks during COVID? Uh, it gets a little humid and warm in our mask. We're gonna see condensation rise up in the tube every time we let go of the bag, all right? And uh, next thing is, are you seeing gold color change on the colorimetric device? Um, and then after that, we're looking for skin color improvement as well as pulse ox improvement. Right? And there is intention and thought behind the order of that because it takes a little longer for skin color to improve as well as for our pulse ox to improve. So there is an order to that. Um, and so after everything is confirmed and we're A-OK, -okay, um, you know, your partner can continue bagging for you, but we're going to secure our tube down. And some eye gels come with commercial tube holders, which is great. If you have them, use them. Um, however, if you don't, you're gonna rip off a piece of tape probably this big. And uh, the way I like uh, taping is I don't like going starting from the center, right? I like starting off center and the short side is long enough to reach the patient's earlobe. And then all I'm doing is now one lap at least as close to the lips as possible and then taping it down on the other side and then you continue to ventilate every five to six seconds. That's it, that's the very last thing you do. You know, you tape it after you make your confirmations um, because it is easy for this to come out, right? You're typically on scene and then you're gonna put this on a backboard, backboard to stretcher, stretcher to ambulance, and bumpy ride to the hospital. So there's a lot of opportunity for this eye gel to slip out. So we do wanna secure that too, okay? Um, that's it guys, that's airway management. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below or message us. Otherwise, if you saw value in this video, please like it, share it. Um, and if you want to see future videos, hit the subscribe button. Thank you. See you in the next one.